Same thing. We have different scales to make to do different jobs in measuring distance. We have different scales to do different jobs in measuring temperature. Now, you might like to know what I've been talking about here. Um, the stuff I have is liquid nitrogen. It is, it is the coldest stuff that I can buy reasonably. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to pour it into this container. Can I slide it forward just a little bit? Oh. Before I continue a safety instruction, if in the course of what I do, anything comes off the stage down there, please don't touch it. Okay? It is so cold it will give you frostbite in a matter of seconds. If it bumps into your shoes, that's not a problem. But bare toes, not a good thing. Okay? Got it? It looks like water, but it's boiling. Why is it boiling? It's incredibly cold. Imagine if you are a resident of this planet Venus, where it's very much hotter than it is here. And I come down and hand you a pot of water. It would start boiling immediately. Well, a person from Neptune who handed me a container of of a liquid that they would have on Neptune, liquid nitrogen, it would start boiling because we're warming it up. It's so much warmer here than where it came from. How much warmer? Imagine the, the uh, if this is the temperature of this room right now, and this is the temperature of a pizza oven, this is the temperature of the liquid nitrogen. It is as much colder than this room is as a pizza oven is hotter. I'm going to uh, show you another property of it. You put something in the bottle. The bottle is only, oh, well, we filled it up almost half full. We didn't have to. As it boils, it becomes much, much larger. As it boils, it becomes much larger. It's already bigger than that bottle. It's filled up to back here. Already much bigger than the bottle. It keeps expanding. It's about 700 times bigger as it goes from a liquid to a gas. I forgot to put I need somebody to tell me what that is. Oh, I didn't do that. I'm going to put that in some liquid nitrogen. I have another thing. I'm going to put that in some liquid nitrogen.
What good is, is looking at yes, the What good is looking at the Scientists use it all the time. I worked in radiation detection. We had radiation detectors that uh, had to be kept at liquid nitrogen temperatures all the time. If they warmed up, they were destroyed. So we had to use it for that. Biologists use it <coughs> to, uh, to preserve, preserve uh, specimens. Uh, you might have had a work removed using it. Lot, there's lots of things it's used for. It's used in industry. But one of the things that's most interesting about it, I find very interesting, is that when something is stored in liquid nitrogen, it doesn't change. Biological samples, imagine this flower in a few days. It's going to look a little wilted. In two weeks, it's going to be pretty bad. In a month, it won't look like a flower at all. But even just a little bit more. Uh, but if I store it in liquid nitrogen, the cells, all the cells' parts, will be just held exactly the way they were when they went in. If I was a scientist and I had some, some uh, a flower that only bloomed every seven years and only from one night when it did, and there are plants like that, I wouldn't have much to do for most of the year, or most of my working career, would I, waiting for that plant to bloom. But if I collect the flowers for one time they bloom and put them into liquid nitrogen, I can store them there. I'm very careful not to put my fingers in, by the way. It will look exactly like it did when it went in when I take it out. Those are far enough. Um, but when I take it out, I have to be careful that I don't do that. <laughs> don't touch it, please.
and go around and around. Let's go around and around. The interesting thing about that is that this was understood, people understood how to do this more than 2,000 years ago. A fellow by the name of Hero of Alexander. He wasn't a superhero or anything. No, like me. Uh, <laughs> he was, he, that was his name. And he uh, invented uh, the first heat engine. All the engines we have, the jet engines, the diesel engines, gasoline engines, they all run because of heat. He invented the first heat engine, which was a, a copper sphere that boiled water in and it twirled. Now let's see how the properties of some of these things have changed. Remember that marshmallow? It now has some rather unmarshmallow-like properties. Oops! Is that the way a marshmallow should behave? No. Listen very carefully. Still tastes like a marshmallow. The thing that's interesting about this is if I were 
while you're standing inside of the cell under a microscope, I'd have to slice it. If the banana cells are not very sturdy, so if I slice them, they're going to be all mashed because the pieces won't be where they were. If I freeze it before I slice it, slice it with a frozen knife, I can find out exactly the position all those cell parts were in when, when, uh, before, I, uh, before I froze it. Where are we? Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, shall we just lift this out of the way? <laughs> this, this, um, in the bucket is some soapy water. And I have a little liquid nitrogen left here. When it hits some water, it's going to boil. When it boils, it's going to make some sides, right? Let's see what happens. I think it's the point of the 